You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and we are bringing you a brand new series to the podcast titled Player Watch. We are going to be focusing on individual players and we're going to be producing these bite-sized podcasts in which we discuss whatever's hot and whatever's not around this particular player. And today's feature player is is the young Brazilian Gabriel Martinelli. As promised, had a really, really good look at him yesterday when I went down to the Emirates Stadium for the game between Arsenal and AFC Wimbledon. There's been a lot of debate around Gabriel Martinelli over the last 12 months or so. You know, was Mikel Arteta getting the most out of him? We saw later down the line that actually a lot of the reason he didn't feature so heavily uh, having returned from that knee injury was because the club were being cautious and that is the words of the player himself. But there were Arsenal fans who felt that there was some kind of rift between Martinelli and Arteta. Perhaps not going as far as a rift, but maybe suggesting that he just doesn't like him as a player, that he doesn't fit in necessarily to what Mikel Arteta is trying to do at the football club. And therefore, he stood no chance of really breaking into the side and really maximising his potential in the famous red and white shirt. Now, I disagree with that. Because I think that every time Mikel Arteta has spoken about Gabriel Martinelli, he's spoken about him glowingly. I don't think I've ever heard him say a bad word about him. I don't think I've ever even felt him suggesting that Gabriel Martinelli is is not a player he rates or not a player he believes can get to that level whereby he'll be a regular starter in the first team. But I do think there are reasons that Gabriel Martinelli has maybe stunted in his development a little bit, perhaps hasn't progressed as much as we'd have liked when we first saw him burst onto the scene, some of which I'm going to go through on this episode of Player Watch. Now, I'm going to show you some statistics and some heat maps and some touch maps, etc, etc, with regards to Gabriel Martinelli from last night's game. But obviously, I recognise that when we're talking about the Gabriel Martinelli issue and why maybe his growth or, or development has hit a bit of a brick wall, why it maybe hasn't accelerated at the rate we'd have liked it to, that, you know, we're looking at just just last night's game in terms of his touch maps. But I think a lot of the problem with Gabriel Martinelli is a bit of an identity crisis uh, on the player's part. And so I want to go into it and I want to explain myself and I want to make those points. Now, When we first signed Gabriel Martinelli and he came to the club, a lot of us were kind of like, well, who is this guy? Uh, Don't really know a great deal about him. In fact, probably don't know anything about him. I hold my hands up. I didn't. But I think very, very quickly, Gabriel Martinelli showed that he's got an X factor, that he's really got something about him that stands him out from the crowd when it comes to young players. He's tenacious. He's hardworking. He's hungry. um, And he... He kind of displays all the right values, I think, as a player, never comes out and complains, never makes his issues known publicly, gets his head down whenever he's given an opportunity. He works incredibly hard. You could never say that Gabriel Martinelli is lacking in effort, but it's just not happened under Mikel Arteta. And while there will be fans out there that want to look at Mikel Arteta and hold him solely responsible for Gabriel Martinelli's failure to develop at the rate that we thought he would or thought he could. I think it's a lot more complex than that. It's a lot more complicated than that. And I think there are factors outside of both of those guys' control that have contributed to it. So let's get into it. I talked about an identity crisis. Now, Gabriel Martinelli has gone on record numerous times saying that he's not a centre forward. He wants to play from the flanks, primarily from the left flank. Now, unfortunately for Gabriel Martinelli, Yesterday, Mikel Arteta opted to play him from the right. He picked Eddie Nketiah from the left. And I think that's probably a compliment to Martinelli in the sense of, I believe that you are more equipped to play on the side that you don't necessarily prefer than Eddie Nketiah is. 
Plus, with the way Arsenal set up the team, with the left-back bombing on constantly, as Nuno Tavares was last night, it means that the player who plays from the left ends up playing a bit more like a centre-forward anyway, in which case you're more flexible, you're more adaptable. I'll push you out to the right and I'll let Eddie Nketiah play from the left. So that says to me, first off, that Mikel Arteta trusts Gabriel Martinelli. In whatever role he puts him in, whichever part of the pitch he puts him in, he trusts that he's going to get 100% from Gabriel Martinelli. And he will not let you down in that sense. So why do I keep banging on about this position thing? Why do I keep mentioning the phrase identity crisis during this episode of the podcast? Well, for me, it's quite simple. I think there is a real disconnect between how Gabriel Martinelli sees himself and what his best attributes are. Now, Gabriel Martinelli, as I've said, wants to play from the flank, but to play from the flank, there needs to be a lot more to your game. The individuality that is so great about Gabriel Martinelli. And when I say individuality, I mean his ability to pick up the ball, take on players, his ability to kind of get his head down and, and get into this zone and into this space whereby he's not even thinking about what anybody else is doing. And instinct kicks in and he goes for goal. That is something you need to curb when you're playing as a winger. And I don't think Martinelli has worked out how to do that yet. When he's in the penalty box, he's very narrow-minded. He's very... Um, cool and calculated and, and lethal and that's what you need to be as a striker so that's the first point as to why I'm not sure that Gabriel Martinelli is as he believes a left winger and he's probably more of a centre forward I think when you're playing as a winger you need to think a lot more about your defensive responsibilities and I think Mikel Arteta has, has alluded to it in the past that actually a lot of the time he wouldn't play Martinelli on the left hand side because he didn't trust that he would use his kind of initiative and fulfill those defensive responsibilities. Maybe not for a want of trying, but maybe due to a lack of tactical awareness. And I think that's a lot of the reason why you see Bukayo Saka played out there sometimes, uh, because he is someone that will do the tracking back and having played in the back line, he has the presence of mind and the awareness to make sure he fills the right holes and covers the right spaces. Equally, when Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has played from the left-hand side, Mikel Arteta has filled that gap at, in other ways. Maybe by dropping Granit Xhaka like he did last season into that hole. Uh, sometimes by shifting the back four across and making it into a three. So Mikel Arteta, when we talked about his playing style and his philosophy last week on the show with Mike McDonald, we talked about him attacking always with a mind for, or always with the the defensive aspect of things in mind. And that's part of the philosophy that he is trying to embed here. Is it going to work? We don't know. We keep having this conversation, but I guess we won't know until further down the line. I guess my point is here is that Mikel Arteta doesn't feel necessarily that Gabriel Martinelli is someone who uh, whose best position is from the flank. I think from rumours that we've heard and from rumbles that we've heard coming out from within the club, Mikel Arteta has, has kind of lobbied to Gabriel Martinelli about changing his position and about how much more effective he could be in that position. And and the, the things that are good about Gabriel Martinelli are the things that indicate a good striker, not necessarily a good winger. Build-up play. Does Gabriel Martinelli offer you an awful lot in terms of build-up play? I don't think so. When we watched him last night, against AFC Wimbledon, he was incredibly aggressive. He was very busy. He was buzzing around the pitch. He was committed. Nobody can ever deny any of those things when it comes to Gabriel Martinelli. But was he actually penetrating the AFC Wimbledon defence? Not often enough would be my answer. Yes, he won the penalty. Yes, he played a massive part in that. But even at the start of the second half, when he was coming down the right flank, you never really felt that Gabriel Martinelli, A, had the vision to look up and pick out a colleague, B, the, the skill to beat someone. It was very much get my head down and drive towards the penalty area. And again, that directness kicking in for Gabriel Martinelli, the instinct to go for goal constantly kicks in with Martinelli. And it's why I don't think that we're going to see the best of him unless we adapt his role, change his role, and he understands his role is uh, is probably somewhere else on the field. Now, if you think about Ainsley Maitland-Niles, you know, and I know it sounds like I'm going off subject here, but Ainsley Maitland-Niles is, is another case of this. A player who believes 
one position, in his case, the centre of midfield, is his best position or preferred position. But onlookers would tell you that his best position is probably at fullback. And I think sometimes as players, you know, you can have your mindset, you know, I grew up playing as a striker, but if somebody told me I'd be playing for Arsenal, but I had to do it right back, I'd do it. But I think sometimes players don't want to accept that the position they dreamt of playing when they were growing up or the position they see themselves best at now might not necessarily be the one. And that narrow mindedness can hold you back. I think Ainsley Maitland-Niles will be held back by it. I don't think he'll go on to have as good a career as he could have if he just said, you know what, I've played at fullback. I've done a pretty bloody good job of it. People like me, I'm going to continue to play there. Instead, he's pursuing this central midfield thing. He's going to get appearances here and there. But is he ever going to be enough in that position to really establish himself as a first team regular at a top, top club? I don't know. I don't think so. I think he'll always be on the peripheries. I think he'll always be on the edge. And the same can be said of Gabriel Martinelli, in my personal opinion, if he does not accept that he might need to adapt his game or he might need to play in a slightly different role. Now, what is that role? That role for me is as a centre forward. I think Gabriel Martinelli, from the first day I saw him play in an Arsenal shirt, has shown, as I've said, all the signs of becoming and developing into a lethal striker. A lethal striker who is incredibly underrated in the air, who scored a number of headers for the club so far, really good at picking up the right positions in the penalty box, who also has the sheer pace and, and physical attributes to run at defenders, to take people on, to play on the counter-attack, as we saw in that game against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, where he made his name in a lot of people's eyes. He also, I think, has, um, you know, the tenacity to lead the press from the front, to close people down, and as a result of that, pull his teammates up with him. So I think there are a lot of positives that Gabriel Martinelli brings to the side. Positives, though, that I think would be better uh, or, or more value to the team if they were being applied in the centre-forward position. I'm going to show you some screenshots to back up some of my points. Now, if you look at the mo the best, some of the best moments that Gabriel Martinelli has had in an Arsenal shirt, I mentioned that goal up at Chelsea. And you can see here, I know there was an N'Golo Kante slip in the process. For those of you listening on the audio, please do feel free to head over to YouTube if you'd like to see the screenshots. But I'll explain them as best as I can anyway. Gabriel Martinelli bursting through the middle of this Chelsea side. Right through the middle. There was no thought of angling his run. There was no thought of weaving in and out to escape the attentions of defenders. It was the narrow-mindedness I talk of. He got his head down. He saw the opportunity. The pitch opened up in front of him and he drove and he drove and he drove until he got into a position where he could beat the goalkeeper and score a, a big goal for Arsenal. That is instinct. That is not somebody who's thought out what they're going to do. That is somebody who's picked up the ball around about the halfway line. His instincts have sensed an opportunity and he has capitalised and seized upon that opportunity. If I take you forward to a goal that some some goals that Gabriel Martinelli has scored, some of his better goals in an Arsenal shirt. This one away at West Ham. Where's Gabriel Martinelli popped up here? He's in the centre of the goal, and he's received the ball in from a wide position. I think it was Ser Kalasinac who played the pass, and he's going to finish it from close range. Again, take it to this goal that he scored at the Emirates Stadium. I think this was against Vittoria in the Europa League. Cross comes in from the left-hand side. Where is Gabriel Martinelli? Now, you can see in this particular screenshot that Alexander Lacazette is on the pitch. Alexander Lacazette would have been the centre forward. But Gabriel Martinelli has gone. He's come from the outside in and he's positioned himself in between a couple of centre-halves. And he's risen like a salmon on the edge of the six-yard box to head home. So again, striking instincts. If I take it on to this goal, another goal that Gabriel Martinelli scored, this time in the Carabao Cup away at Liverpool. Lo and behold, Gabriel Martinelli pops up in a central position on the edge of the six-yard box. And that, for me, in a nutshell, is why Gabriel Martinelli, although he might not know it, 
has all the... Or, no, I'm not going to say he might not know it. That's being disingenuous. Although he might not want to accept it, Gabriel Martinelli's instincts are those of a centre forward, are those of a striker and not a winger. That's that's what I believe. And I think he's a classic case, just like Ainsley Maitland-Niles, of a player who, if he just took the advice and 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 explored it, I think he could go on to have a much better career. Now, I think it would be unfair of me when talking about Gabriel Martinelli to ignore the fact that at such a young age, he's obviously had a really serious knee injury. And as we've seen with a number of players over the years, Hector Bellerin being the latest example, sometimes those injuries are very difficult to come back from. Sometimes those injuries can really knock you for six. And unfortunately, it takes time for your body to get back to where it was. It takes time for you to regain that sharpness and explosiveness, which is such a big part of Gabriel Martinelli's game. And I thought last night, although he, um, you know, wasn't amazing, I thought he he contributed in terms of being aggressive, pressing, ex being explosive, etc. So it's going to take him time to find his feet. And it's it's why I believe the club were very cautious about rushing him back last season and wanted to ensure that the recovery was as, as good as it possibly could be before um, sort of putting too much burden on him and too much pressure. But so, you know, I, I want to be um, considering or... or What's the word? I want to take that into consideration when making my points. I want to be considering. What am I talking about? Uh, I want to take that into consideration when making my points on Gabriel Martinelli. Uh, another concern I have about Gabriel Martinelli is, is, is he technically secure enough? I'm not sure. I think as a centre forward, where you're relying on instinct and you just need to turn and, and get shots away and, and you're kind of in that zone where you don't think too much about what you're going to do, the opportunity presents itself and you grab it and you snatch it I think that that's less of an issue but I think from a wide position you need to be able to pick out crosses your passing needs to be immaculate your ball control needs to be good I think there are things that Gabriel Martinelli is probably still not quite there yet on that get exposed when he plays in the wide position and, and taking all of that into account you know I, I showed you the screenshots from goals and the positions from which he scored those goals and the positions from which we've seen the best of Gabriel Martinelli. And I'll just finish up in terms of screenshots by showing you Gabriel Martinelli's heat map from the game against AFC Wimbledon last night. Now, if you can, if you have a look at this, he is predominantly out on the right-hand side, which is obviously where he was asked to play. But he is not in the penalty area all that much. Yet I've just showed you some of Gabriel Martinelli's best moments that have all come from within the 18-yard box, that have all come from Gabriel Martinelli's instincts telling him where to be, how to get into the right place at the right time, and then him having the quality to finish those opportunities. If you don't get Gabriel Martinelli into the penalty area, you will never get the best Gabriel Martinelli. That's how I see it. And that's why I keep thinking that Perhaps he should be more open to playing as a centre forward. Perhaps Arsenal and Mikel Arteta should be working harder to try and persuade him and then giving him the opportunities when, when it's right to play that position, give it a go, learn the role a little bit better and hopefully contribute to the team. Now, we've talked a lot about positioning. We've talked about qualities. We've talked about instincts. We've talked about injuries. We've talked about all those different things. But a lot of the time as well, you know, you can simplify this kind of discussion quite easily. And one of the, the, the big points that I don't want to overlook and I don't want to miss in looking at some of the nuances is perhaps our expectations of the young man are just simply too high at this stage in his career. And Mikel Arteta, when he first refused to kind of, or maybe refused is the wrong word, but when he first showed a reluctance to include Gabriel Martinelli, I hold my hands up and I'll say that baffled me. For someone who's supposedly building a new team and a new squad, I thought that Martinelli would have been someone at the forefront of those plans, someone at the centre and the heart of those plans. But actually, the more I've seen of Martinelli when he's been given opportunities last season and this season, is that he's not quite the finished article. And in fact, he's not as far down the progression line as some of us initially thought. Am I saying he's a bad player? No. Am I saying that he'll never get to that point 
where we're looking at him and saying he's an absolutely top striker. No, I'm not. Because I do, in my heart of hearts, believe that Gabriel Martinelli has all of the qualities and, and the desire and the determination to get to the very highest level. But for me, I just think, and again, it's my personal opinion, let me know what you think in the comments, he's got more chance of achieving that and of flourishing as a centre forward than a winger because his build-up play lacks. Because he can buzz around and be energetic without really giving you all that much penetration. Whereas as a centre forward, he's shown that he can take up the right positions. His instinct tells him where to be and when to be there. And he should trust in those instincts and actually looking at those instincts and, and using them, I think will be far more beneficial than asking Martinelli to do things that I don't think necessarily come naturally to him. So that's my take on Gabriel Martinelli. As I say, watched him very, very closely last night, but also spent some time looking back at some clips of him today and, and reading up on some statistics and some facts to make sure that the arguments I was putting forward had some basis to them. And I, I really believe they do. Hope he comes good. I'm sure he will eventually. Um, you know, the, the, it's a long way back from an injury like that. I think we can all agree. But the positive thing is that it's not because he doesn't have talent. It's not because he doesn't have the desire or the fight or the passion. I just think there needs to be a little bit of a tweaking of Gabriel Martinelli's position. And then uh, we could really see the best of this young Brazilian striker, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, we're going to leave it there. Make sure if you haven't done so already, you hit the like button. In fact, if you hate Spurs, hit the like button. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Let's get as many likes on the board as we possibly can. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you're listening via the audio platforms, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and leave us a review. That really, really does help. We'll be back very, very soon with more Arsenal-related content. Until next time, take care of yourselves and stay safe. Ciao. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon.